Last week there were particularly a, a, a lot of positive comments that we received from people, and uh, actually we're we're, uh, we're connecting with more people than we would uh, if it was just a Sunday morning in the winter time, and uh, this is the reality. And even when we are back worshiping, um, I'm sure we're going to do some form of putting the service up online for those people who are unable to be here. Uh, last week, I announced my mom's uh, 97th birthday, and uh, I forgot my son's birthday. Uh, Scott uh, turned 27 on uh, Tuesday, the 19th, yeah, and uh, happy birthday to him. Anybody who wants to be uh, recognized uh, with a birthday or an anniversary, please let me know. We continue our service with He is Lord. John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, 
and belief in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, and they were in their boat mending the, the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, be with us this morning as we are gathered in your name, and bless both the preaching and the hearing of your word. Uh, last week we had uh, virtual communion, and I've uh, received uh, comments from people how much they appreciated that. And uh, so we'll do that again. We won't do it every Sunday, uh, but uh, we'll have an opportunity probably every other week to have uh, this virtual communion. It's, it's a way for us to connect with one another, and it's a way for us to connect with God. Have you ever received uh, one of those emails that said, um, they say lots of things, but they say something to the effect that uh, uh, some money has been left to you, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and if you email me your bank account, it will be deposited. Or uh, we need uh, to uh, put money in a uh, safe place for a period of time, and you will be rewarded richly. Please send us your bank account. Or uh, my mom actually received a phone call uh, in the middle of the night and uh, the person said they were a police officer in the uh, States, in uh, Arizona, and uh, said, your granddaughter Whitney has been arrested and uh, she needs uh, uh, money for bail. And she listed your name, so please, uh, if you could forward that money immediately. And my mom was quite flustered a, that her granddaughter was arrested, and B, that they would be asking her. And what she said is, just call her father. He'll look after it. But the reason that these scams are happening more and more often is because some people are believing them. Some people are actually sending their bank account information to total strangers. And... Uh, you can say that it's just naive people who are doing this, but really what it is is that people grew up in different times. People grew up in times where we could trust one another. And when somebody said something, and they said something in a somewhat believable way, we trusted that what they were saying is the truth. And unfortunately, these aren't the same times. And it's very difficult for some people to understand what the truth is and what the truth is not. You probably have heard on the news quite a bit about uh, QAnon conspiracy theory. And basically uh, what it is is that somebody has put on the internet this theory and uh, they say it's absolutely true and uh, it's about the Democrats. Uh, they are running uh, uh, sex trafficking uh, through a small pizzeria in Washington, D.C. And these people need to be thrown out of office and prosecuted for what it is they're doing. The conspiracy theories go on and on and become more and more far-fetched. Let me say this, I have not done any investigation on this pizzeria. This is not the truth. Do not believe these conspiracy theories. This morning in the Gospel reading, it's the story of Jesus beginning his ministry. And it says, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Problems that uh, we're having in the world just don't center around politics, 
The church is facing a huge crisis. I can feel the crisis that is happening within the church. And uh, we have opposing views within the church. People often ask me why there are so many denominations and why even Lutheranism has different uh, segments uh, of, uh, of Lutheranism. And I tell people that it's this, it's people have a different understanding of the interpretation of the scriptures. And if you've ever read the Bible or read large portions of the Bible, it contradicts itself. It says one thing and then says another thing. And it's hard for the average person to understand what is the truth and what is not the truth. The crisis that the church is facing, well, there's numerous crises, but, but, but this is one of the basic ones. Is the law the most powerful part of our faith or is it the gospel? The law is this is that you are a bad person. And these are the things that you must do to become right with God. And if you do all of these things, then God might have compassion upon you and forgive your sins and give you the gift of eternal life. If you don't do these things, if you don't belong to a certain congregation or a certain church and have a certain perfect belief, then you cannot be a part of the kingdom of God. That is the law. It is also based on fear. Fear is a very powerful experience in our lives. And that's what all these conspiracy theories are based in, and even churches have stooped to this. Make people afraid, and then you can get them to do what you want them to do. I don't believe that is the gospel. And Jesus says in the gospel, he came, it says that he came to preach the good news after John was, was arrested. And this is the good news. The good news is that God loves you completely and unconditionally. The good news is that you can never be separated from the love of God. And I don't care what anybody else says or what they say in their sermons, that if they indicate that you can be separated from God's love, your actions can separate you, tell them to read Romans 8, 31 to 39, and that is the truth. But how does the church move forward? If we drop one of the most powerful things that we've had in the church, if we drop Fear, can we still exist? I'm one who believes that we can. We can exist when we preach the gospel in its purity and its entirety. When we come to understand and feel the presence of God in our lives and feel his enormous love and truly understand that there's nothing in this life that will ever separate us from that love. That has to be the power. That has to be the power in our life. That has to be the power in our churches. And this is how we have to exist in a very difficult world. The power of the gospel. Amen.
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.